Well, uh, I'm Eric. I wrote the songs, played mostly rhythm guitar, acoustic guitar, a little piano. I think there's a little ukulele on the uh, on the on the albums, harmonica, and then I, you know, I'm a multi instrumentalist. I always say that I'm uh, a master of none of them. My real skill was finding great people that could make the songs come alive. The way I came into it is um, I've been invited to um, Weedstock. Eric had a thing uh, yearly called Weedstock. Music parties that we hosted here, the Weedstock parties. I know Eric because we've played uh, together for, for years. I played in the praise band with uh, Eric at Grove United Methodist Church for years. I was through the church band, Pieces of One. Um, so we've been friend in laws for, um, for friends in laws, however you want to say it for 28 years, going on close to 30 years. You know, everyone he knows is a musician, and uh, he knows lots of good ones, uh, yet somehow I ended up here. And I've had great connections with the church band for years, um, so that's kind of the core of the band. So, uh, the Eric Weaver experience, I kind of resisted that name a little bit. I got all these guys together to rehearse and, and put these songs together, and we were trying to come up with um, kind of regular names for the band and everyone's like, you wrote the songs, this is your thing, it's got to be the Eric Weaver project, it's got to be the Eric Weaver something, so uh, we kind of cutened it up by making it EWE, the, the U, uh, Eric Weaver experience, so that's kind of how that name came about. Yeah, sing like that smooth, smooth, silky, gravy sandwich kind of way, you know. <laughs> the gravy sandwich. When I decided to do this, uh, well, first of all, I decided to do this about 25 years ago. He had these songs, I think, since high school. He wrote those over such a long period of time. So the song span, I don't even want to know, 35 years. The, the oldest song on the album is No Time for Tom. I wrote that probably when I was 16. This album is like a, a time capsule for his musical journey, which is really really impressive and he knows he knows what he wants. He's, he's been writing these songs from experiences that he's had in the past. There's a song that I wrote in college and then a song I wrote shortly after college. It took me a long time to kind of pull it all together. Uh, it was a it was a list that I had put together. We call it his bucket list. I wanted to record an album. I wanted to fly an airplane. I wanted to you know, get a pilot's license and a bunch of other things. And then I was fortunate enough to be out of work last summer and I said maybe it's time to Hit, hit a couple of those life goals. I didn't fly an airplane, so I decided <laughs> I smartened up and I said, maybe recording an album is, is more my speed. He always wanted to put it down and get people he knew to play. So I, I sent an email out to them. They're all like, yeah, let's do it. I got an email one day from Eric saying, will you do horns? And I said, of course, because who wouldn't want to play with Eric? Eric and I weren't really in communication for a few years, but it was like a situation like, whenever I had something going, we'll play. Well, it was Graham's birthday. He had mentioned to me that he was interested in doing the whole studio project. And would I be interested in coming over? I'm like, sure, just give me a call. Have gun, we'll travel. He's actually a multi-instrumentalist too, that he's not hes not really getting the shine on the album, but he, the guy's pretty amazing. It's not like getting the old band back together. It is getting the old band back together. So it's been a bit of a reunion too, on top of, uh, on top of the, just the musical aspect. And then Graham I've known for 30 years. I used to play out live with him uh, 25 years ago at the Artful Dodger downtown. I would play the Congress and sing, and Eric would play the guitar and sing, and that was every other Friday night. That was really a lot of fun, uh, and that took up a lot of time, but that was, that was a lot of fun. Innocent fun, of course. Yeah, he's clearly been a part of the, the musical, musical history of, of me, so uh, he was clearly in it. So that's how, that's how the band kind of got together. By the time I came into the project, everything was pretty much Set. Pretty much everything was written. You know, he sent out some demos where he kind of played most of the parts. And he did the drums, he did uh, guitars, bass, lead, everything. You know, he had sort of 95% of the recipe and, you know, we added some salt at the end. When this process started and I got everybody here, I was definitely uh, a little nervous because, you know, I'm putting myself out there, hearing my songs, you know, can you guys help me? And I gotta say, I was really moved at how how supportive and excited people were. When that first rehearsal ended, 
and I started getting feedback like, hey, these songs are really good, this is a lot of fun, you know, don't worry about it, when can we come back? I mean, that, that was probably the moment for me that was, wow, this is really going to happen. Then I started getting really excited and, and the collaboration really started happening. The late nights were all before this. You know, it, at Eric's house rehearsing, and the cool thing is that all these different people come up with some great ideas and, and putting the whole production together. Even though Eric and, and Grammy seem to have that that last final say, the band has changed the songs. You know, the songs I think are good, but everybody has contributed and changed things. And uh, a lead here, I mean, Charity wrote horn and flute parts, and the lead parts are all written. For one of the songs, I'm not sure Eric. I had imagined having horns in it for Since I Lied, but I just heard a horn part um, a la Chicago. And thankfully, Eric agreed. <laughs> drum parts, I'm not a drummer, so the drum parts all had to be written. So, I mean, everybody collaborated. It was, it was really great. I love to play the drums. We have another drummer here. He's a horrible human being. Uh, I've known Grammy also for many years. Him and I have a, a really good relationship. He's, he's like my alter ego. He's telling me things like, why don't you do this? And I tell him things. You know, want to do that? It's fun. We 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 mix very well together. I like it. That was good. Now, are you gonna remember that? We gotta remember that. Everyone's gotta remember that. What? You have it on recorded. Could we record it? All right, let's roll it. Give it a try. Okay, I'm rolling. Stop, stop, stop. All right, so, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a type A guy. I go in with a plan for everything I do, uh, and the recording session was no different. And Eric knew it was aggressive. And Tom at the studio is a very kind of laid back, creative guy. I sent him spreadsheets and Word documents and... He sent out schedules Saturday and Sunday, here's the time. 9.03, we're going to do this. Here's the schedules, here's what songs. And at 9.37, we're going to do this. And uh, it shouldn't be a surprise that we didn't stay on schedule. Uh, we had a lot to accomplish, nine songs in two days. You know, I said, okay, so roughly how many songs per hour do we need to do? Or how much time do we have per song? If we can get the foundation of these songs done ahead of schedule, then we'll have lots of time to be creative. Well, I don't, I don't like to think of it that way. I'm like, well, but you do, <laughs> you do have to. So we had to kind of change gears a little bit because we fell behind schedule. I pushed a little bit and yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that that came out somewhere in the recordings. For Eric and I, it went about 11, 11 and a half hours. Uh, it was long, <laughs> it was long. Day one was frustrating. Oh, so many problems I can't even go. I'm not even gonna mention names. You know, no, I'm so kidding. You know no. <laughs> I can't mention all of them. It, it was a grind. It was it was hard on everybody. Recording's a different dynamic. You know, everybody's trying to do everything perfect. You know, when you do it live and you flub a note someplace, nobody notices. When when it's going to be on on tape, then it's there forever. <laughs> and so everybody's trying to do their best. The first song we started with, "Since I Lied," he thought would be the easiest song. It, you know, I've been playing it for 20 years, and that was the most difficult song for me on the drums. And I I was like, you know what I. I gotta get the hell out of here. I'm blowing it for all you people. I'm playing just by, by heart and soul and, mm. you know, I'm changing it up every time I play. Then, you know, there's the aspect that, you know, this is Eric's thing, right? And, and we all want to do the best we can for Eric. So that adds an element of pressure to it, I think, too, that nobody wants to let Eric down. And everyone wants to get it right. For, for Eric, and uh, I, I really kept saying that to him. I want to get everything right for you. I got to get it perfect. And he's a perfectionist. And he even said, we're not getting it perfect. Good. Tell him good. It's good. You can't hear Tom? No. Can everyone else hear Tom? Yes. Yeah. Two, two, three. I'm, uh, I've been telling everybody that, he, that he's doing all this, you know. And they say, well, what kind of music is it? And I, you feel like an idiot because I, I can't put my finger on it. I am happy that the songs sound very different. I don't know how that happened, to be honest with you. It goes anywhere from uh, a 70s pop type of feel to, to a Jimmy Buffett Island feel to uh, a jazzy to a country, ballads. I say it's rock, but then, you know, the island song. One, two, three, four! It's not a rock song, it's just a lively ditty of it's like an ambrosia of music. I don't think I intentionally said I'm going to write you know, something that sounds like Jimmy Buffett and Neil Diamond had a kid and wrote a song. There's songs that are kind of bluesy and angry. There's songs that are more pop. And maybe it is that, that, they, that they're 35 years of 
songwriting, maybe it's just a, a time thing. It, you know, uh, that's that's the only way I can explain it. You know, I just kind of let the songs happen the way they were feeling, and and they, they, there's a great variety of songs on the album, so that's that makes me happy. He wrote one song for. Um, we had a nephew that passed away, my sister, uh, my sister and his brother-in-law. So he wrote a song, a beautiful song about it. He asked me to sing it. And then the first time we were playing it in his house, uh, I literally had to step away because I was so just overwhelmed that he wanted me to sing it. As far as how um, different people took different roles, especially with the vocals, for me, I love I love writing songs. I like I like playing lots of different instruments. Uh, for me to give up vocals in a song is not not like necessarily a bad thing. When I sing, I I really put everything into it, and I do that on I do that on purpose. Graham's a great singer. He's a great uh, front man. The interesting part about singing, uh, or playing musical instrument, and everything is because once you put it out there, it's a, it's it's out there. It's live, and you can never get it back. But I figure I'm giving people their money's worth, but I'm gonna blow it out. If I make a jackass out of myself, I make a jackass out of myself, but I leave it out there on purpose. Uh, some of the songs that are more personal to me, you know, I said, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a crack at this one. It's more personal or whatever. When we used to play downtown, I wouldn't get to bed until 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning because I'd be wired up. He's still the same way. He was wired up last night. He was, you know, do you think we should sing here? Do you think, what song would you should we start with? No one's brain is turned off, especially Eric. He, he just wants to, he just wants to keep going. But then on day two, I, I kind of gave up on mixing on day two. And I said, you know, let's just let it happen. We'll get what we can do uh, on day two. And day two was much better. We, you know, I got to kick back after my part was done and just kind of enjoy the rest of the musicians. Up to now, it's been work. Now the fun's beginning. You know, we're getting down to the editing, and you can hear it now, you know, everyone's sort of done their parts, they're going to be twin down vocals. Eric's a little stressed out because it's tiny, you know, he's paying for this thing, so. I think I was better behaved on day two. <laughs> yeah, ball busting's great, and um, it, there has been a lot, yeah. That is fun, and you know, I, I don't care, I started right in on everybody, I started right in on you. And everybody just has deserved it. A lot of different personalities. Gotta have that. It, it almost seems at times like Eric's our dad. <laughs> Grammy and, and Rob fight. That's fun to watch. You know, <laughs> and then, and then Grammy and Eric fight. <laughs> Grammy and Kenny fight. And it's been actually breaking up uh, the atmosphere a little bit. That the tension can get you every once in a while, but. Uh, Having fun with it makes it uh, a lot easier. So the busting chops, I think, is, is part of the process. It's a lot of fun it's going, you know, going on out there. You know, the guys and the girls, they're just sweet, kind people that are uh, busting on me, which I wouldn't expect anything less, and I'm doing it with them. We all have been keeping in mind that this is Eric's dream. This is his child, and he's letting us, you know, this is his village, all nine of us or eight of us. It isn't for our own glory, it's um, so that Eric can realize his dream. I'm not in this uh, for for money or, you know, you know, I'm 52 and I released an album. I'm not expecting to go on a world tour. I've been involved in recording experiences before. Every time is different, but this, for the amount of personnel involved, the amount of songs that we're doing in the short, relatively short amount of time that we're doing them in, I think um, everything is going great. The creative process started flowing, we got all kinds of great uh, music recorded, and uh, you know, overall it was a great experience. I definitely learned, I learned a lot uh, about what it really takes to put down good music. And people gave up their time, um, a lot of time, I and mean, they all have families. Me, I live in a cave, and no one needs to see me for months. We, we made the most of the two days. You can't do that anymore. You know, people have nailed their parts. There's a good sense of togetherness with this group. Not only has this process been fun to be with the guys and play with them, but I feel like I've grown as an artist. I and mean, what, what more can you ask for? It's something that uh, probably every musician has always wanted to do, is go into a studio and, and put down some cuts and, and have them put on, on record or, or on tape. I mean, he's really missing out that he didn't tell me to sing, play the drums, play bass and guitar on every song. We don't really need the other people. I mean, let's, let's be honest, they, they're really dragging the albums down. But, you know, I, I, I'm just telling this to you. Uh, I'm sure no one else will see this. I honestly, I don't want this to end. I, I said earlier today, 
are we going to continue doing some stuff so that we can maybe play out? Well, certainly there's lots of people to thank for sure. To, you know, Kate, uh, she's been a great support to let me uh, spend. You know, I've been obsessed with this since about Thanksgiving. Eric and Kate uh, have been been awesome. It's amazing to watch it unfold because you know every you know every week he works on it and makes it better and makes the songs better and we have great company here. To get that kind of support and say, you know, go for it. You've been thinking about this for 25 years. Go get this done. Um, and then, you know, of course, the band, the support they've shown and the enthusiasm they've shown. And when I remember when I got the initial email, I thought, truly, I thought, this is this is an honor. Gosh, how creative can you be, right? I mean, I, you know, I play, but I don't, I don't write. You know, you got to be legit creative to do that. And uh, and he just seems to do it you know, by magic. It's really a gift. It's been a great process and I, and I thank Eric for, for giving us the opportunity and giving me the, the opportunity to do this. Uh, I feel honored that he's asked us, and me especially, to, to be part of this. Yeah, I could say it's one of the best experiences of my life and I will, I'm going to carry this for a very, very long time, a very long time and it really means, it means a lot to me that he would uh, ask me to sing on his record, you know. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful that I was included in this process. Is there anything else you want to say to Eric specifically about... Yeah, I love it. I love Eric. I love Eric, and he knows. So it means a lot. I hope people like the music, and I hope that we can play it a little bit um, out, and um, uh, I hope I keep recording. I hope we can keep being creative. I would love to stay together with these guys and keep playing. That'd be fun.